The moon is calling once again. NASA has just reignited public excitement with the announcement of the first crewed mission to orbit the moon in over half a century. Artemis II's hardware is set to roll out to the launch pad within two weeks, with the launch window opening on February 6, 2026. This marks a remarkable milestone, but behind the celebration lies a challenge NASA isn't eager to highlight. The very system designed to carry astronauts back to the moon faces growing safety and technical concerns that were meant to be resolved long ago. Enter SpaceX's Starship that wasn't part of the original plan. Now it's becoming the solution NASA didn't know it needed. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. Start with the technical issue that delayed Artemis 2 by over a year. When Artemis 1 flew in November 2022, it was an uncrewed test flight. Orion circled the moon and returned to Earth. The mission was declared a success. But engineers found something concerning during post-flight inspection. The heat shield showed unexpected charring and erosion in more than 100 locations. Material that should have ablated smoothly instead cracked and came off in chunks. This happened during re-entry at roughly 25,000 miles per hour, when temperatures exceeded 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. NASA spent two years investigating. The root cause turned out to be gas buildup inside the Avcoat material during what's called a skip entry trajectory. When Orion dips in and out of the atmosphere, then skips back up, gases get trapped and cause the material to crack. The issue came down to permeability. When Avcoat burns, it produces gas that needs to escape. In this case, it couldn't. Pressure built up under the surface, breaking the material apart. NASA chose not to redesign the heat shield, which would have taken years, and added billions in cost. Instead, engineers modified the re-entry path for Artemis II. The new trajectory will produce less heat and reduce internal pressure. Ironically, another change created part of the problem. Engineers needed clearer ultrasound scans to ensure the heat shield blocks were firmly attached to Orion's body. The older Avcoat was too porous for accurate scanning, so they made it denser for Artemis II. That made inspections easier, but limited gas escape even further. The revised trajectory can offset that effect by lowering pressure buildup during re-entry. Because the new path narrows timing options, Launch opportunities for Artemis II are now about half as frequent as before. Where Artemis I could launch roughly every 12 days, Artemis II's window is now cut by about 50%. NASA officials described the mission as significantly more difficult to schedule. Still, the situation highlights NASA's thoroughness. The agency spent two full years analyzing every layer of Orion's heat shield to understand the root cause. This slow, methodical process adds safety, but reduces flexibility. SpaceX's Starship program follows a different model. Its ceramic heat tiles, similar in concept to the space shuttles, but built with modern materials, have endured several high-speed re-entries. When problems occur, SpaceX adjusts the design and tests again within weeks or months. NASA and SpaceX represent two contrasting philosophies. NASA prioritizes exhaustive review before flight. SpaceX advances through frequent iteration and accepts early failures as part of progress. Artemis II is still expected to fly safely, but its delay underscores a larger truth. NASA's cautious pace ensures safety, yet limits adaptability, an area where SpaceX's approach holds a distinct advantage. That doesn't mean SpaceX overlooks safety. The company's motto is clear, Human safety is the top priority. What sets SpaceX apart is its fluency, like water. Rather than being rigid, it took NASA's traditional waterfall approach, plan everything in advance, document every step, then build, and combined it with its own fast-paced, hands-on testing style. The result is a hybrid system, disciplined enough to meet NASA's standards, yet flexible enough to learn rapidly from real-world experience. So, what do you think? Is SpaceX's hybrid approach both efficient and sustainable? Share your thoughts in the comments below. While the heat shield issue is a technical problem, the cost issue is existential. According to NASA's Office of Inspector General, 
Each SLS launch costs approximately $4.1 billion. That includes the rocket, ground systems, and mission operations. It does not include Orion, which adds roughly another billion dollars per flight. Total Artemis program spending through 2025 reached $93 billion. That bought one uncrewed test flight and is now paying for the first crewed mission. No lunar landing yet, no permanent infrastructure, just proving that humans can return to the moon using hardware that costs more than some countries' entire annual budgets. SLS is expendable. Every component gets thrown away after a single flight. The core stage, which contains four RS-25 engines originally built for the space shuttle, burns up over the Pacific Ocean. The solid rocket boosters splash down, but require such extensive refurbishment that calling them reusable is generous. Even Orion's service module, built by the European Space Agency, is discarded before re-entry. This architecture cannot sustain a lunar program. Simple math makes that clear. If NASA wants to fly six missions per year to support a moon base, that's nearly $25 billion annually just for launches. Congress currently appropriates about $25 billion for all of NASA. The numbers don't work. Now consider Starship. Development costs are harder to pin down because SpaceX is a private company, but estimates range from $2.5 billion to $5 billion so far. That includes the entire Starship and Super Heavy booster system, plus ground infrastructure at Starbase in Texas. Launch costs are projected between $10 million and $100 million per flight once the system is operational and reusable. Even taking the high end of that estimate, Starship costs 40 times less than SLS per launch. And because both stages are designed to be fully reusable, SpaceX can fly repeatedly without building new hardware each time. Reusability matters. Falcon 9 first stages routinely fly 15 to 20 missions. Some have exceeded 25 flights. That's why SpaceX can offer launch prices around $60 million commercially while still making profit. The hardware cost gets amortized across many missions. SLS will never achieve that economy. The design is fundamentally expendable. NASA could theoretically fly it more often if production capacity increased, but each flight would still cost billions. There's no path to making SLS affordable at scale. For a sustainable lunar program, you need low cost per flight and high flight rate. SLS provides neither. Starship is designed to provide both. Cost matters, but so does capability. SLS faces limits that Starship doesn't. Payload capacity is the first constraint. The current SLS Block 1 configuration can deliver roughly 27 metric tons to lunar orbit. That's enough for Orion with some margin. Future variants might reach 38 to 45 tons, but those upgrades are years away and not yet funded. Starship, with orbital refueling, can deliver more than 100 metric tons to the moon. That's not a small difference. It's the gap between transporting a capsule and transporting an entire habitat. Flight rate is the second constraint. SLS can launch perhaps once per year, maybe twice if everything goes perfectly. Production bottlenecks make higher rates impossible. There are only 16 RS-25 engines in inventory, all from the Space Shuttle program. New RS-25 production exists but costs over $100 million per engine. Solid rocket booster segments take 12 to 18 months to manufacture. Starship is designed for rapid reuse. SpaceX already launches Falcon 9 more than 100 times per year. Starship shares many manufacturing and operational approaches with Falcon 9. Once the system matures, multiple flights per week become feasible. Mission flexibility is the third constraint. SLS can launch exactly one payload type, Orion, with its service module. The rocket is optimized for that specific configuration. You cannot use SLS to launch cargo separately, build a space station, or support anything other than Orion missions. Starship is a general-purpose transport system. It can carry crew, cargo, satellites, or serve as a space station itself. The upper stage provides about 1,000 cubic meters of pressurized volume, equivalent to the entire ISS. For lunar missions, that volume can be converted into living space, laboratories, or storage. 
These constraints matter strategically. China is developing capabilities for monthly lunar missions in the 2030s. The United States cannot compete with a system that flies once per year and costs $4 billion per launch. You cannot build a moon base by delivering 27 tons once per year. You can build a moon base by delivering 100 tons multiple times per month. The architecture determines what's possible. Here's the situation NASA finds itself in. The agency has spent $93 billion developing SLS and Orion to return astronauts to the moon. Artemis II will demonstrate that capability in February 2026. That's real progress. But for Artemis III, the first landing mission, NASA selected SpaceX's Starship as the lunar lander through a $2.9 billion contract. This creates an odd dependency. NASA pays $4.1 billion to launch SLS. Starship does the hard part, landing on the moon. It provides life support during the surface stay. It ascends back to orbit. Orion just waits in lunar orbit, then brings the crew home. This arrangement makes sense given current constraints. SLS and Orion exist now. Starship Lunar Lander is under development, but long term, the logic breaks down. If Starship can land on the moon, it can also launch from Earth with crew. The capability needed for lunar landing overlaps substantially with Earth launch requirements. Once Starship demonstrates orbital refueling and crew rating, there's no technical reason to use SLS for transportation. Crew could launch on Starship, refuel in orbit, fly to the moon, land, return, and come back to Earth, all on hardware that costs a fraction of SLS per flight and can fly far more often. Elon Musk has said this explicitly. SpaceX is developing Starship to enable lunar bases and Mars missions. Those goals require capabilities that naturally obsolete expendable rockets like SLS. NASA understands this. The agency has already funded Artemis missions 3 through 5, which commits to using SLS through roughly 2030. After that, decisions will be made based on available capabilities and budget realities. If Starship proves itself over the next few years, the economic and operational case for continuing SLS becomes very difficult to make. Even with political support and jobs in key states, spending $4 billion per launch when a $100 million alternative exists cannot be justified indefinitely.